Knicks looking for the lead. Randall, kick. Brunson, in and out. And a loose ball foul is going to stay right here. It's a little bit like we saw in the first quarter. The assist to Mayfield goes extremely high. And the hustle by Hartenstein keeps his possession alive. Hartenstein hands back for Hart. Cut off. Working around the perimeter. Open look. It's good. And the foul. Then at the end, watch. Because of the delayed kick out, Hardenstein gets hit, and now they're going to look and see if the shot was up before the foul occurred. The three here, no, it's before. It's before he got up into a shot. So the contact when it's being called is right there, right there. And Brunson is still going into a shooting, not even in the shooting motion yet. I'd be surprised if they give him the basket. The foul occurred after shooting, after shooting motion. Oh, okay. The count. Hardenstein will shoot one. The game clock's going to be set for 642. So I guess the upward shooting, they must have called it the foul a little bit later when Brunson was already up in the air with the shooting motion because the ball was down below. Watch here. You can't see it, but the ball is down there, and now it's up in the air. So that's where the foul occurred, and that's where they called it. Watch Brunson's arm. The foul is right there, but the arm is still down, so obviously they called it right there. What we do here is we check and get the crew to tell us exactly when they see illegal contact. Now, there's lots of marginal contact fighting through screens, so it's not first contact, but first illegal contact. Scott Foster then will say, right there, and we freeze it, and if Jalen Brunson is in the upward shooting motion with his arms, then we score the basket, and Hartenstein will shoot one, as he did. Miami up by three. Randall being hounded by Lowry. The cut. Hartenstein, no. Hartenstein the follow, but did he come over the top? No. Lowry is on the floor, and that's where the foul occurred. Kyle Lowry. What's on the... <laughs> oh, there. <laughs> he didn't stand a chance right there trying to block out. Yeah. That's Jordan a wrestling Randall. move. Uh, no, he put, a, he put the elbow all in the side of... Uh, Kyle's ear. Lowry fend off. Shot clock is down to four. Love. Loop it. Good help. Grimes knocks it free. One second on the clock. It's an air ball and a shot clock violation. Martin. Miami claims it grazed the rim. He came over to break it up. It went right through the wickets of Hart. It hit the rim. In a moment, the Heat had a six-point lead with seven minutes left, and then with 6.42 left in the game, the biggest play of the game. And I got a real problem. I never, I seldom criticize officiating. Look at the contact right there. Look, look at Brunson now going up with the shot. Clearly, in our estimation, that contact, I don't, I don't care how the officials wanted to spin it, it came before Brunson gathered and, and took the shot. That was a four-point play that swung momentum and changed this game. Those things have a way of happening sometimes in, in big games. But if you watch the replay, see, again, Bartenstein was screening in the rotator. Bam was the next guy in rotation, had to get out on the shooter. So Hartenstein, they call it pinning in, okay, as he slides across. Now watch what he does on the pass. He had Hunt's Bam. Stop right there. You hold it. Okay, now, the ball is down around Brunson's knees. There's no way when this contact happened, he's in an upward motion. And that's the ruling. If you're not in an upward motion, it's no basket. Roll it. After the contact is the upward motion, that basket should not have counted.